Tekrar hoş geldiniz. Ee, şimdi sunumunu yapmak üzere birazdan Sayın Nikola Milutinovic'i davet edeceğiz. Nikola Milutinovic, atık, çevre, kentsel atık, organik atık ve tıbbi atık arıtılması uzmanı olarak 12 yıldan fazla deneyimi bulunmaktadır. Atık ve kirliliğin yönetilmesi, optimize edilmesi, en aza indirilmesi, durum değerlendirmesi ve öngörülen metodolojinin uygulanması alanlarında çalışmıştır. Enerji projeleri ve verimlilik uygulamaları, inşaat verimliliği optimizasyonu ve yenilenebilir enerji teknolojilerinin özümsenmesi, araştırma ve uygulama, çevresel etki değerlendirmesi, projelerin kirletme boyutunun kontrol altına alınması ve en aza indirilmesi konularında 15 yıldan fazla süredir çalışmaktadır. Yerel paydaşlara, Avrupa Birliği mevzuatına ilişkin sunumlar, yerel faydalanıcılar ve AB delegasyonuna ise raporlama ve derslerin ve sunumların hazırlanması dahil olmak üzere pek çok görev üstlenmiştir. Avrupa Birliği mevzuatına, mevcut yasaların analizi ve bunların Avrupa Birliği mevzuatına uygunluğuna ilişkin çok güçlü bir deneyimi bulunmaktadır. İş, tedarik için ihale dosyalarının, inşaatlar için FIDIC standart sözleşme şartlarına, ve Avrupa Birliği Dış Yardım Sözleşme prosedürlerine uygun olarak hazırlanması konularında da tecrübe sahiptir. Sayın Nikola Milutinovic. Good afternoon. Thank you for staying. Uh, I see most of you have stayed. And, uh, okay. Uh, you heard uh, you heard a very long announcement. I didn't know you read the whole thing which I sent. And uh, as you see, I, I put uh, environment first. My environmental work with Europe and with uh, European projects in the waste and uh, sustainability. And environment uh, before what the American calls you know, in the Star Wars movie, they call it. Uh, I was on the dark side. I was on the energy side, uh, fossil fuels, special coal, and actually I was doing a completely opposite thing. I was defending what they I'm an advocate for your European regulation and everything. Now the first part. Uh, this presentation is going to be a global presentation. The last two were connected with Cyprus, so I want you to have this in mind first. Okay? So, we are, first of all, I feel because you're all here, uh, I have to point out that not in one presentation the word waste was not mentioned. I mean, it was mentioned everywhere. Once it was called garbage, and once it was called uh, something else. But, but anyway, it was mentioned everywhere. So let me try to uh, tell you something, which is, which I hope you will keep you. Okay. So, uh, just briefly, what is waste? Uh, waste in nature, it, it, it, doesn't exist. I mean, this is something which, which, which is created by us, humans. We are waste of kind. Uh, that two tons of millions of municipal waste is created, plus 
I, I put this in bold because I didn't want to put in bold the 7 to 10 billion which my colleagues from IMO know what I'm talking about. Uh, and this number is showing that we are on track okay, for this year. We are still in September, so it will be around here. Now, should I point it here? Or, yeah, okay. So, what is, the, what is the problem with waste? I mean, it was mentioned in all of the presentations. Uh, well, first, there is a paradox. I mean, let's say, not in the last 100 years or 40 years, but maybe since the Industrial Revolution, or maybe even after the big plague, we have, humans have been steadily, human life and human uh, wealth has been steadily improving. On the other hand, we can see the ecosystem from which we derive all these goods from which we have the well-being is declining. And that's from the famous paradox. We, we, we have became, we, we did become a throwaway society. Look, I mean, I have an iPod, they found it here. I, I mean, I, we, we buy new things. We, we don't use them until they can be used. We buy new things. We, we, we become, uh, we don't, we dispose of objects because of their style. We all know this. And, and it's not something which is curable. It is probably in the human nature. I, I cannot explain it, and nobody can basically explain it. Those numbers there again, which are from the world counts, they are not real numbers. But I just want to show you the last one, which says that, that in the way things are going now, uh, we need about 1.7 Earths to bury this waste we are creating. Again, mentioned in all of the presentations. Even Yana's were ever surprised on the second slide. So, now, just one more thing. Uh, yesterday, in uh, the presentation from the doctor from Ireland, I think, not in my backyard syndrome was mentioned. But, in the sense of waste, it has another meaning. Not in my backyard, uh, in the sense she mentioned yesterday in her, her presentation about sustainable uh, power projects, means that neighborhoods, towns, local societies do not want to accept anything in their backyard from new installations uh, of, of any kind. They don't want to see it there. Not in my backyard, in the sense of waste, means that if it's not in my backyard, I don't care. I don't care that it's, it's, it is waste, it's someone else's backyard. The community service is so good, it takes it away. Where does it take it? I don't care. So that's another point which I want to raise on this one. Now again, why do I have to come here and talk? Now, again, what is the way, why, why, did, why, why the waste problem is so big? Why do we, uh, expect that uh, due to another presentation uh, uh, which says that let's say in 50 years uh, the population will reach 10 billion we are going to have about 70 percent more waste due to urbanization overpopulation and it's because what we take in, and we take from nature we take from nature with that which does not create waste if we left nature alone without us, it would be okay. But we take, there is, we create waste. We make, we create waste. We use, we create waste. We dispose, and then at the end, our product becomes waste. And then this, this picture, which says it, all the pollutions, because we can say emission is not, but emissions are waste. I mean, fertilizer is waste. When it goes through certain phase, everything is waste. Now, again, one more thing, political. But not, I'm not going to talk about the cyber's problem, but uh, why is waste a global problem? And this is not a phrase. This here is not Cyprus. It doesn't look like Cyprus, even though someone might say it is. This is... Uh, 
This is one province in Austria. One province in Austria. Now, they, uh, and this is, this is the real situation, they, they built a power plant which was supposed to serve the needs of electricity for the area in the black box. Okay? Now, the other two ellipses you can see is what is the area, what is the political area, of course, defined of the province, which was not supposed to be served through this power plant alone. And the other area is where, what is the impact of the emissions, not just emissions, and who knows what, all, all kinds of waste and power people here know. I don't want to get into all the waste power plant creates. This is the affected area. Now I'm coming back to Cyprus, but not on, on the political, it's <laughs> the global problem. We, we, here we are, uh, from 2004, we are Europe in a, in a, in a wider sense. And uh, here we already have European assistance for the wa wastewater treatment in uh, Hasbolat. We have other projects. And we should have because we will have this situation. Okay. Now this is something interesting. I didn't see anyone show show this, and this is how uh, the waste problem uh, how the waste problem affects the countries with uh, with a higher income, countries with a lower income, and countries in between. And as we can see, that uh, I mean we have from two two two thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars per capita. Uh, that the waste problem can be, in a way, improved or get worse and improved or, in some, in some cases, just worse because of the low, uh, low developing countries started to develop power plants and, and we, we know the situation in the Far East and the Middle East. Now, now this is another problem. This is another one. Uh, we're going to talk about waste technologies. And this is the, the main topic of this uh, presentation. But here we see, I wanted to show you something else. On the right hand side is the diagram I showed yesterday. A factory, a query, a, any institution, uh, even the seminar. We are using raw materials. We are mining, for example. We are transporting, we are eating, processing. And there is an environmental impact everywhere. And we are all, and on the other side, we recycle something. There is a recycling plant. There is a waste plant of which I'm going to talk in more detail. But as you can see, the waste, waste treatment plants are also another waste problem. In all of the, in, in the waste management system, in transport, in reprocessing. We also have environmental impact. Have this in mind. So, but, but now let's be serious and let's come to the heart of the problem. So, what are what is waste? What are the waste treatment technologies today? Where we are today? And uh, as I said, that waste occurs from human activity, from different sources, commercial, industrial, municipal. I don't read this. Um, the term of waste for someone is not a term of waste for someone. Has, someone might have a use of your waste, so it, for, for, it's another phrase, but I want to show it. These are the type of waste I don't want to get into. You can see municipal, medical, uh, you can see pet bottles, you can see uh, wooden, separated products. Again. Now, now, there are so many waste categorizations depending on where you look, but I will, you know, just go briefly to, to, the, to the ones which affect all of us and, and North Cyprus as well. Municipal waste, environmentally regulated, hazardous waste, radioactive waste, waste from industries, waste from non-hazardous waste from industries, household hazardous waste, agricultural waste, Construction, demolition waste, uh, medical, oil, gas, sludge, 
purging, sewage, transportation. I hope you will get this. This is a comprehensive relative of this. Now, now again, I think this was already shown so on one presentation, and our hosts here, sorry, I have to say, but they created most waste. I mean, that's, we know. And, and I'm so I don't want to repeat it again, but I have to say that, that that's what it is. Households and municipal waste and everything, it's 8.5. Construction, general, this is from Eurostat, newest. So construction is 36.4%. Then mining and uh, have to take care of transport. And that. Now, I want to show you waste management is not completely new to, uh, uh, I mean, waste management started maybe even in the, in the 70s, 80s, especially in England, animal waste. Uh, so, uh, so, so let's see solid waste management. We have these steps, basic steps, and this is uh, the next slide will show one. It, this is a good diagram. Who wants to look at it? And I hope it will be distributed. It's good because it's not. It doesn't represent one municipal waste project. You can choose and pick and choose and choose the line exactly for you. Because before you choose what you are going to and how you are going to treat municipal waste, you have to uh, do a very I mean, maybe a yearly study or a half yearly study of the, of, the, of the composition of waste you have in your community. Uh, just, for, uh, just for an example, uh, we don't have one we don't, in northern part of section. We don't have waste, uh, uh, uh, waste separation and, and, uh, uh, in the moment or uh, for its source or a factory for this. So based on the composition, which I will show you on, uh, after a couple of slides, you will decide what kind of process you are going to use, how expensive it will going to be, and what will be the percentage of re recyclable uh, uh, waste you can achieve. Liquid waste, I put it here very simple. I, I didn't want, I don't want to go into, into it very much, but I can tell from my experience that uh, wherever we are making anything, we have, we have a water waste problem, anything. Somewhere you have only animal waste, somewhere you have municipal waste, somewhere you have construction waste, but wherever you have water, <laughs> and water which you have to treat, and we know that it's, it's a pre-treatment, it's a mechanical treatment, biological treatment until, and, and, and then chemical treatment until a phase where you can either discharge it at certain quality, reuse it at certain quality, or use it for landfilling, uh, sludge, and, and agriculture. Sorry. But believe me, wherever there is waste, there is water, where it's not the opposite, the other way around. Medical waste, I was working with it, diagram for your, again, I hope it will be distributed for you to know. Uh, medical waste has to be separated, first to be treated as hazardous, non-hazardous, has to be sterilized. There are parts which have to be shredded and sterilized. There are things which have to be incinerated about 1,200 degrees, uh, two seconds retention time. It's, compl it's a complicated uh, story. Nuclear waste, in addition to all of the steps that other waste production streams have, have at the end and surveillance and monitoring until a moment we can send it somewhere. That's why I believe we're going to Mars now, or I don't know, uh, or to Moon again. Now, now we're coming to, to one interesting thing, waste to energy, it was mentioned many times. In, in a couple of presentations. Now, there's a general uh, there's a general idea that this, this, this is something that's why, why are we talking about uh, other treatments when we can burn all of the waste, it will disappear, and uh, we are going to solve our problem. But that's definitely not true. Uh, 
now we come back to again not in my backyard nobody wants these plants even though they exist in vienna in the center of vienna there are again more pollutants than in uh, than in a thermal power plant and the equipment is this is a classic i mean this is not the the the, the best available technology Maybe in, in, in incineration it would be a fluidized boiler, but then a fluidized boiler costs 10 times more uh, because it's all stainless steel, the materials are high quality. Here you, you have mercury, you have everything which you don't have in, in conventional fuel. So it's not, the, it's not the solution. It's done when it has to be done. Uh, animal byproducts. Uh, I told you one of the first uh, uh, uh, in the chain of, of the waste treatment facilities which appeared in Europe, in UK especially. Everything changed in uh, the 90s after the mad cow disease. Then it was heavily regulated and then it was uh, very strictly categorized into uh, three categories to one which is something which is called category three, which is something we don't eat. Or we had enough, but then we throw away. Or we don't eat legs of a chicken, which Chinese eat, you know, for cultural reasons. Uh, from that moment on, uh, the whole process has changed. And uh, again, I can get into this. I, I made one category three plant, one category one plant, category one dead animals and everything. And it's based on sterilization. Something similar like medical. Now we have a new waste, the e-waste. And it's not just computers and, and the telephones and the, no, but it's everything. It's everything electronic. And according to some uh, how can I say, studies, this recirculation of, of, of e-waste is going very well. I mean, this is the, because there are valuable parts which can be already uh, reused in the industry. So I just leave you with it that it's not just computers, tablets, or these things, it's solar panels as, as well. Now, now I want to show you something which, which uh, uh, again, uh, when you have time and uh, if you think what, about some previous slides, this is, uh, again, uh, Eurostat uh, from 2017. This is a situation of Europe plus Switzerland, Norway and Iceland. Now you can see the huge difference. You can see that, like uh, someone else uh, mentioned in one of the uh, previous uh, presentations is that the Scandinavian countries, uh, you can see they don't have like Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Finland and the Netherlands. I'll stop there. You don't see a red line. And you know what the red, red line is? Landfills. So what they do, do they, they do waste to energy and uh, they do recycling and composting. Please keep this in your head until the end of the presentation. Now, I have to come back to my friend Donald and Malta, which is, by the way, you know, 300, time, 300 times smaller than Cyprus. And they have 96% of landfills. I don't know, I, I don't know if you've seen, I didn't put up, you know, how a landfill looks or how a landfill is uh, constructed or something. I didn't put it because the idea is not to landfill, or at least to minimally landfill. That's that's the end of of, uh, of waste. And we should be like Sweden. If we cannot be, that's another question. Now there is another thing which I talked about earlier. I, I left left it here because I wanted to put it by the composition. These are country example. Why I said you have to. Uh, in order to, to, to accommodate, to, how can I say, construct a, a, a municipal waste plant which will separate all the valuable uh, recyclables, uh, organic matter for further or no further use, just landfilling, 
you have to know the composition, and you, and you can see it, it does vary from country to country. And then this is Turkey, and it, it varies from towns to rural areas. So the logistics and, and the IT presentation we had earlier would help a lot with this, uh, because this is done, these, these calculations are, are done manually, they're done by, by measuring and uh, opening up bags for six months in order to get the right uh, quantities and, and to, to construct the right plant. Uh, one very similar thing which I would suggest here, uh, just very shortly, uh, uh, we're doing in Montenegro, very similar composition to waste, uh, let's see, say, which I found and which is in the in my next session I'll talk about this uh, here in North Cyprus. Uh, they are making uh, a plan for separation of waste and first of all they don't have pre-separation that means at, ho at home that you have three to eight bags different where you put paper, plastic, you, know, you put everything in one bag so they, they have the same thing so they made one plant which is which will serve about uh, 300,000 people where you have where, where you have separation and then biocomposting of what is what comes out of that process and all the green greens which come out from the environment around okay so that's a good example for north Cyprus, which i would do um, animal waste i told you about categorizing and uh, the very and the strictness of, of control of animal waste today. Now, sustainability, I don't know how many times I heard it, and what I wanted to say. I think I heard somewhere one, uh, one statement which I wanted to comment, but it was late. In one of the presentations, we said we can, we can uh, uh, recycle 80% in a municipal waste uh, factory, or we can generally recycle 80%. Generally, you should recycle 99. I mean, that's the idea. I mean, if you if you type this hierarchy on the internet, you will get uh, this pyramid probably opposite. And I, I wanted to put it like this. So, in order to be sustainable in waste management, we, we need first to prevent the appearance of waste. We have to try to reuse things. We then recycle, biotreated, recover, and then permanently dispose. That, that's the, the last option. And this, the idea is this to be, and, and you know, the plan in Europe, it cannot be zero. It cannot be zero because of hazardous waste, because of monitoring of nuclear waste, medical waste, but it should be reduced to zero. And again, landfills which we need a Malta is small and they landfill everything I mean we need to construct them but our landfill is full if you know it's full and it doesn't have a, a separate place for hazardous waste as far as I know so I wanted to keep this very simple protect health and environment I, I mean everything about waste has been said I, I just to the, I mean, it, it, it pollutes everything, it influences health, it destroys the environment. Uh, conserve the resources, use renewables. There are so many nice presentations at this uh, conference about this. And we are, we are not the last generation here. Come on, let's leave something for the future. We didn't inherit the earth. Nobody. It's ours has to stay for the future, for the future generation. And this is sustainability. Now, how, how to move forward? Knowing that, uh, first of all, we would all like to solve it tomorrow. You know, issue tenders, Europe will accept, and uh, going forward. So there are certain foundations for this. And like in Real life. So there is the financial and economic aspect, like all for each family. There are environmental aspects. I briefly tried to 
stated. Political and legal aspects very important. This part can even be before environmental. And institutional, social, and even cultural aspects. We have to start, we have to start, this, this conference is not a start, but it's a great step forward, big step forward, not, not Neil Armstrong or something. So, now, now, the good thing about this is that uh, I don't have, I don't need to make a comparison between uh, Mr. Trump and Mr. Obama, because we are in Europe, and because Europe regardless of Brexit and problems and everything, has always been a part of all the Paris Agreement, of Kyoto Agreement, and I can read this to you, but I hope it will be distributed. I don't want to read things which are essentially what I just said. So, basically what I said. Please print it out and have this in mind. Um, I left one, one thing which is in, in, in, in harmony to what I said, and this is from the Netherlands, one of the countries which doesn't even lengthen. The, the idea of creating uh, projects which are reused, refurbished, re, re, re, remanufactured, recycled, which are like, like Lego or uh, like uh, jigsaw puzzle. Uh, maybe someone, someone who follows technology and there is an idea that a mobile phone, you're only going to buy one small brick and then if you want a camera, you buy a camera. If you want, I don't know, speakers, you buy speakers and attach to it. And uh, this is something which is rewarded for producers who think about it. Now, we come to the one thing which I will continue in the report, which is concerning North Cyprus. Uh, and uh, we are talking about job creations, and uh, the question is, are there jobs? There are so many jobs created just in waste, not in uh, other uh, opportunities regarding sustainable development in other areas. And uh, just to uh, just to prove this to you, this this is this is from this web website. This is just the first page. I didn't want to print out all of the pages. And uh, wait, jobs is UK side. These are all the pages under which you will get numbers and numbers of jobs. The jobs in Europe account to more than I think. Uh, uh, million or something like that, maybe I have the wrong number, I have it here. Uh, and you can see this from, from, from, from, job, from jobs which are for young people and not trained people, to new jobs which, are, which we heard are appearing and will appear as we talk, um, to, to high-end positions in, in the waste market. So, it is very evident, as it is evident in our report, which follows next to this presentation. Now, of course, if you remember the foundations for waste management sustainability, what, what, what needs to be done with regards to legislation, which I didn't want to put in the first place because I cannot influence legislation anywhere. I can talk about it. So, we can think of we have to create a way to, to, to make funds for creating the system. We have to create a system first to reduce and, uh, and to manage the waste and then slowly, slowly follow the Swedish principle. But, so we need either taxes or fees, we need recycling credits or some kind of subsidies to the one who is treating or, or even or even creating his own way of recycling, or deposits or refunds, or some sample, the polluter pays, which is not present here, not, not, not even in the Balkans, or very rarely in Europe, the user pays, so paying users of waste, because they make money from waste, and uh, pay as you throw, again, another principle, or 
make higher landfill taxes. Again, as you see, I don't like a landfill. landfill. And from, from those taxes, uh, uh, create uh, waste treatment plants. And the final thing we already heard, and this is an aim for circular economy. So whatever we take from nature, we should return. Whatever we produce, we should recycle. And all this should be a, basically two circles, which end at the very end with energy recovery only and minimum landfill. Only of things we cannot use or reuse or that's it. That would be uh, for this part. And I thank you very much, and thank you for your patience. It's been a long day. And I leave the stand to Uchan. Nikola'ya teşekkür ederiz sunumundan dolayı. Ee, Şimdi Gülcan Hanım'ı davet ediyorum. Kıbrıs'ta Yeşil İş Fırsatları raporunun sunumunu yapmak üzere proje koordinatörümüz Gülcan Yalıncı. Yes, uh, we came to the nearly end of the conference. Um, uh, it's been one year we are working with Nicola and uh, with the chamber plus local expert Ali Korakam. We have um, checked the opportunities of northern part of Cyprus regarding the green job opportunities. And what was the objective behind this uh, report preparation? Uh, to raise the awareness uh, in the young people's mind uh, instead of going for uh, classical known occupations uh, like engineering uh, or medicine or all sorts of uh, occupations which already known, which like the jobs that we don't remember uh, what were the uh, jobs of the 40 years ago, uh, young people should start thinking what will be their future jobs. Uh, and uh, in order to uh, lead them or uh, raise awareness, we said what kind of job opportunities are available in the Cyprus and let's prepare a report and go to the uh, um, government and knock the door and ask them please uh, prepare a legislation or prepare an incentive program for the young people and uh, do something to uh, disseminate this message that uh, we have worked on it uh, for last uh, one year. And now Nicola will uh, give briefly the results that we have uh, prepared for at the, at the end of the report. And uh, I want to uh, tell clearly that this report will be on the uh, GODEC uh, webpage, IMO's webpage, and also uh, GODEC's Facebook page for the young people to download and read uh, uh, all sections of the report and prepare themselves for the future. Thank you. young people and not just the young people, the whole society closer to the theme of this seminar. I think that would be the right word to say today. But uh, basically we started uh, uh, in 2017, end of 2017, uh, 18, sorry. And uh, how, how we approached and how to, we, did you come to the conclusion, which I will say at the end is 
we made the background analysis uh, in, let's say, of, of, no, of the northern part of Cyprus of all sectors. And when I say all sectors, I mean construction, energy power generation, transport, agriculture, tourism, and then uh, environment in the sense of use of water, air, waste management. We made a cross-section at that moment of the existing situation. Uh, based on this, uh, we prepared, uh, we prepared, uh, to, after doing, this is about the northern part itself. And this is the beginning which you will all be able to read. Based, based on this, we presented the practices uh, mostly in Europe and, uh, and in the world with regards to green technologies, what is happening today. Then we, of course, always refer to EU, EU policy, which we all follow. We did put in the regulations which are already in accordance and which, uh, which are being, or maybe they have, they have been put into full accordance with European regulations since uh, January 2019. And uh, basically from this, uh, we made some suggestions of the transition of the North, of North Cyprus towards green economy in, in all of these sectors, not in just, not in, not in waste, in the waste sector, because this was unfortunate that this was, this is connected, but in all sectors, that means, that means I, I mentioned agriculture, now I know more, I would mention more, uh, we mentioned transport, tourism, mentioned energy power generation and uh, we suggested uh, we, after, after each uh, for each of the sectors the jobs which would, would be created and uh, we think should be created immediately of course it's a process of course it, it requires for example somewhere installations or uh, it requires for certain uh, factories which are already doing aluminium recycling to finish their recycling state projects and uh, for uh, already established factories which are doing uh, water heaters to go to and, and construct electrical photovoltaic systems and so on and so forth. We were also uh, greeted by uh, many uh, governmental organizations and uh, we can tell you we had more than 15 meetings starting with kit tech with industry industry of, uh, chamber of industry Econo uh, union chamber of engineers ministry of labor ministry of education we, we really tried everything and we also had group meetings with all of the people who, who were co who have uh, contributed to this session as well and uh, first to tell you that it's interesting that uh, we didn't have one uh, bad word. I mean, we were greeted with, with, with enthusiasm everywhere. And if I'm right, I mean, I have to say this. And uh, so that uh, everything we reported at that time without the written report, but in, in, in words, what should be done in the energy sector, what should be done now that we that we have received water from Turkey? What should be done? Uh, how to protect the aquifers? Uh, what should be done with transport? Which was nothing has been done. As I see it's, it's, the situation is still the same. So uh, we suggested, and everywhere the, there is a will. Definitely, there is a will, and and and this conference proves that there is. Uh, there, there, there is a way, and uh, but the, but there are things which all of the participants of these consultations did say that are an obstacle, and uh, that there are no micro taxes, there are no incentives, there are no uh, funds, which is all this problem and which I pointed out uh, in the previous presentations and uh, we do require improvements in the labor force 
quality uh, in the new method of vocational training within the Green Job Opportunities Trust. And this is something which was concluded and not just that, an action plan was made and uh, uh, IMO has, it's a five-year action plan, has been following it to the letter and this conference is just one of the results of the actions of, of IMO for which I congratulate them to the organization and uh, and there is and, and I believe we all stay that that means a lot maybe, maybe we expect a bigger numbers but I will, I will say that we made uh, uh, on the basis of these consultations and uh, uh, on the basis of uh, what is written in the in, in the report a conclusion for certain sectors and for the environment air and waste management we we, we say the needs are I'm, I'm sorry if I repeat myself but this is the these are the final conclusions as that we need to reduce energy and air pollution we need to reduce water and wastewater treatment we, uh, I mean to, to, to, to, to enhance water and wastewater treatment and management as well as solid waste management um, in the agriculture, I think we had a great presentation. I really wouldn't uh, talk about uh, the knowledge we need in organic farming, uh, which was done by Jana and, and Donald uh, as well. Um, in in the construct for the construction sector, we we did we did uh, how can I say uh, offer a couple of. Uh, uh, things I didn't hear at these presentations here, and uh, we did ask for maybe thinking about not, not just uh, because I, I'm a I'm mechanical engineer, as you heard, and, uh, and uh, uh, my local experts are again not from the, the, the civil or architectural part. We did, uh, we did think of uh, using more different materials like. Uh, uh, wood and, and steel construction and things which might not be in complete, uh, complete satisfaction of the sector. Um, but uh, which, will, which would be, uh, which would create less waste and which would be, which would create more efficient uh, uh, building sector as well. Uh, in the, the, the, the tourism sector, we made comments exactly as in Jana's presentation, and uh, we just we also used for which I'm thankful some of the uh, some of her comments for, for, from her previ previous uh, studies which were published on the net, and uh, in the energy sector we uh, we strongly recommended uh, use of more. Uh, uh, renewable energy, especially noting the resources we have in the solar sector, noting as well the wind sector is not as in some countries uh, a, a sector which will develop because of the uh, wind situation, which is not as, as, as perfect as the solar one is. And uh, we already we, we plead again for uh, knowledge uh, to be uh, how can I say considered at the universities which we see that it is already uh, in the renewable energy sector which which is definitely the future uh, the future of, of, of Cyprus um, I hope that most of you will be uh, willing, and especially the local engineers and uh, experts from all the sectors uh, we have mentioned, will uh, will read and even comment on this material, and uh, we will be willing to first update the report and to uh, follow you up on the new, uh, uh, well, we have to make a new uh, background analysis probably in a couple of years to see what is done, how many jobs were created, is this something which we have foreseen in, uh, in our uh, study 
uh, what else has to be done and uh, of course uh, uh, IMO being the leaders of this uh, five-year program uh, how we're proceeding let, let, let's hope that maybe even in six months or latest a year we could have a follow-up on this uh, work we also have, want to thank Europe for the assistance on this project uh, especially IMO who was assisting us in all the steps in all the way, all the experts, uh, contacts, transport, all the means, whatever we needed, they, they put this as a priority even though they had a couple of projects uh, running parallel to this. So I thank them personally in the name of the local experts as well. And uh, if you have any questions before you read the material or if someone else would like to ask anything with regards to the previous uh, presentation or to the to the for the report which will be available soon I'm ready to answer anything you ask so in the moment nothing okay you have my email and uh, I'm, I will answer anyone Thank you. Huh? I think we should not let Nicholas without any questions. <laughs> One last question, okay? <laughs> no, just anything. <laughs> no political questions. Okay. So, Is there any comparison with, let's say, other projects you did uh, where, let's say, Malta or another island, uh, the flow of uh, materials, yes. and manufactured goods, yes. other things, whether it is plastic bottles or plastic uh, wrap, wraps or containers or things like that, uh, there must be some limit to how many things we can bring to the island without taking them off. We should, we should take some things off. What are, is there is some study that shows that we're taking some waste out? Let's say we're taking out you know, plastic bottles or we're taking out cars or... Where can we bury them? How many cars? So I wanted to see if there is any information about comparing with another island. Well, unfortunately, I, I can say no, but I will, I will, give, you the, I will give you an answer. Um, there are ways. Uh, the problem of import of cars is that, um, again, I come to the previous presentation, that the economic situation of the society is improving. Regardless of what you said in your presentation, exactly nobody is satisfied. Uh, yesterday on my uh, road back, I asked, I mean, the situation is catastrophic. I mean, it was like two hours to pass 20 kilometers. It's Friday afternoon, but it's... And I said, well, there, there is a solution. Malta had a solution. I mean, Donald can help me. He had a solution in the 90s, which disappeared. And at that time, that government, if Donald will just say yes or no, they stopped the sales of cars beyond certain cubic meters and even size because they don't have space there. They are 300 times smaller than Cyprus as a whole, and they had at that time 300,000 people living there uh, officially. Am I right about this? Yeah, it is. And also, maybe just to add, I mean, uh, share, share, share perfectly your views. I mean, and, uh, I mean, at the moment you're looking at also, the government is looking at also other alternatives, for example, which I think could could fit with the current context. I mean, it takes me, for example, 40 minutes every day to get from, from my place to the office, for example, because of the traffic jams in Kairina and Lapta and whatever. 
And for example, one opportunity is um, sea transportation, yes. which is not, uh, not, not ex exploited, capitalized from. So there are various opportunities, various options, which maybe one needs to think a little bit more about out, out, outside of the box. I mean, uh, just to, because I, <laughs> this is a nice part of the project you will read, I hope. Just have a glance on it. Um, I, I put there many, many, many studies done on this. And, and, and for the North Cyprus, there was a study of a railway, a renewing the old railway, uh, putting, how can I say, uh, tran uh, local transport again back in function. Uh, electric cars in the center of town. Uh, two people in the car at least. One person in the car. And I mentioned yesterday because I said the only way to do this is what India introduced last week. And that is even and odd numbers. Last number. Even you can drive on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, and vice versa. And he said, that would be a problem. I would get another car with an even number. No, no, but that's not a joke. That, that is ex the actual, from my, my very good friend, and it came straight out of his head. When I said, no, this is now introducing me, he said, no, we'll buy another car. So that, that, that means, and then I come back, I have to tell you, there are, uh, we are unlucky that Japanese are selling, uh, of course, right side driven cars after two years for, the redu redu reduced value of 40%. Now we have to find a country like India and sell them maybe after we use them for two years here, which is not going to be the same condition, but to renew them, recycle them and polish them and make, find something like this. The only thing I know is being done is uh, maybe something with tires and that would be in the southern part of Cyprus, which is again an ecological disaster, but they have, did choose to do it. Uh, not sure if it works yet. Uh, and it's considered in a way renewable, but uh, again, like I showed on one slide, slide, yes, it is renewable, but again, we have another source which I don't look as renewable. Again, it's a pollute. Again, it's waste. I don't care if it's recycled. And I didn't have time just to say, recycling is called a silent industry. Recycling, I'm sorry, recycling, I mean these factories are called silent industry. This is a secret I will tell you at the end, because nobody hears about it. Nobody wants them close to them. But they are the only factories in the world where, where if they are smart and they work smart with the government, they have income at the gate, so-called gate fee, and they have a product. If you're making a computer, you have to buy this, this, this, this, make a computer and sell it to the, here, if you are smart, you get a gate fee to refuse, to receive rubbish. From this rubbish, you make profit. So profit in both ends, that's why it's sad. Sorry, excuse me, I interrupted. Uh, just to, uh, to continue, question, I think it was an interesting note. I wanted to know if in the island if it's been looked at the volume of import, not just the cars, everything yes. uh, from plastic products and uh, is there any research being carried out in the island in, in terms of studying that balance of the volume of import and then the volume of increase on your landfill sites, like the rate of increase of your land, landfill sites or depth? And is it being studied and is being looked at? Is it critical? Is it in a, are you guys in a this immediate need of thinking of strategies for recycling and what is the situation here? It's, it's critical. The situation is critical. The, uh, Mr. Korakan, who is sitting behind you, he, he can say that the, the landfill, the, the, the the largest one, which was projected here to last another, I mean, to, to, to accept goods for another 10 years is almost full. Uh, uh, another landfill, which was supposed to build, be built and Europe 
has constructed even uh, these uh, transfer stations and everything, uh, we're talking about from Gusta part, has never been built, but, but from the transfer station, you can see an illegal dump site. It looks nice because you see the seagulls in the, in the, in the sky, but the, uh, it, it's not better in uh, the southern part. That's another problem. Because, as we say, we cannot, we can, we can divide this island into 10 parts, but it's one piece of land and then globally, again, part of Europe. Now, uh, on the other part, all of the owners of the first recycling uh, waste factory are in jail because they made illegal deals. So it's a, there, was only, there was only one municipal waste recycling factory which has overcharged the people of the region of Larnac. The other one was never made because, again, there was a fight for this. So, and we're talking about Europe. Illegal dumping. <coughs> I had a number. I, I, I, was, I, went, I went through my presentation very fast. I had a number that we, we're talking about 40% of illegal dumping in the world. I mean, even in all the, the developed or not developed countries. So, here the situation is it doesn't look well. It really doesn't look well. I, I don't I don't know. I mean and, and I, but on the other hand I know that the people sitting here and all the we can we can make simple efforts. A couple of and, and there are certain uh, uh, we had I had calls from municipalities. Let's say better standing municipalities in left Kosh or Nikosin. Who, who want to do things, who want to do things, not, not just waiting for support, but who want to improve, uh, you know, both waste to energy and make a recycling process. It has to, it has to be a joint effort uh, of certain towns. I, I don't know if I answered yes, the question. I mean, we are doing a lot of uh, strategic studies for various problems across the region from our colleagues in Copenhagen, they yes. travel quite often and advise on landfill design and waste to energy design. Yes. Uh, so just wanted to know what's the status here. Uh, it's being looked at and maybe hopefully future collaboration is needed to, to help and develop a strategy for that. The, the only thing which, which has been done is, let, let's say, eliminating the imminent waste of uh, hazardous uh, biological animal waste and uh, that was done Europe has uh, uh, prepared the project and the uh, design was done I, I don't know if it's operating and uh, someone asked me because there is someone asked me here if uh, because they have some medical waste which has to be disposed they uh, uh, North Cyprus has two best incinerators now which could be in a way used for this purpose because they are incinerators which work at uh, the parameters uh, allowed in Europe and the installation I hope was done. And so that has been done, uh, I think, but I think that uh, more can be done. And, uh, and uh, I really expect that next uh, at the conference, I think more people will come and uh, more majors of, uh, of, of, of municipalities would come, not only developed ones, but the larger ones who maybe by listening to all of us could understand that we cannot solve just a municipality problem. Maybe we can, but join forces together. Two or three towns can solve this. Like I told you, make, make, make uh, not just make, not make profit, but finally, you know, uh, in a good way, like Jana said, in a bad way, saying that this is not sustainable as a, this complex is not. But I would like to at least clean North Cyprus to look like Kapuk. But you know, you understand, but the, but the opposite, I mean, uh, uh, of what you were saying. Because this is kept clean, I know, it's not sustainable, but let's, let's try. Let's try for mining. Let's,
I want to extend a little bit what uh, Halid Bey said, probably, and forward with this question, like, uh, yes, we have waste, and we have to think of whether we should recycle it, reuse it, whether it should be in this country or send it abroad. But uh, you may be aware what Singapore is doing as an island. They're recycling about 40 to 50 percent, I think, their waste, and they're landfilling in the sea, in a shallow area, where in future they are going to use it as a reclaimed land. So do you think we have such a potential and then we can make use of some of our waste to do that in Cyprus? Yeah. Would it be feasible? Have you, are you aware? And then that will increase our land and it will be properly used at this. I, I am aware and I am aware what they are doing. I mean, the recycling industry, I mean, uh, especially, in all, all, all sense, it, it's perfect. Um, reclaiming land, they're doing because they, they are very limited in land. I mean, you know this, that uh, uh, I think that only 4% of people in Singapore live in houses which you can see here in uh, Girne, just on, on, on 100 meters. So there are no houses. Everybody lives in apartments. There's no, no, no space. Um, uh, we don't, I mean, I was uh, doing, as a part of this project, uh, talking to some people, and we didn't put it in the project about the marina business. This is another, uh, you see, this is another way of thinking about sustainable tourism. This is one uh, way that Jana said, Perfectly. There is another way. I mean, this is the high-end tourism, which is again people who have a lot of money. We could attract them and then reclaim land, create marinas, and so on. The problem with exporting our used cars and exporting uh, anything used—it's always possible. But let's see how. Why Sweden has no landfills? What I showed you, or Finland, and they have vast lands. They have exported it to countries who are using it to incinerate it. Why? They, are, they have their incineration, but they do not incinerate uh, the, the, the plastic which creates all of the other pollution. You understand? They incinerate things, unfortunately. We don't have organic matter to incinerate here. This is clean burning almost, and this is considered renewable. Uh, the problem is we import here used cars and uh, selling used used cars we have to find a market with the right hand wheel side uh, we might we might like they send us cars which look like new the, the cars we send we have to they have to look like new then I cannot suggest something, you have to understand, I cannot suggest something which collides with EU regulations in any way. And, and because this project was done based on EU regulation and based on Cyprus already uh, adjusting or will adjust in, there is a time period, in environmental sense with all the rules and regulations, which means uh, uh, circulation of recycled goods, uh, uh, food goods, um, animal uh, treated sterilized goods. So it is complicated. We have to be there in full compliance with European regulations. And then we're talking about Singapore, which is not in Europe. You understand? I mean, um, who is going? Actually, we're buying this because uh, especially Singapore cars are very good. I mean, they, they're the best, I mean, from right-hand side. I mean, if you want to buy something, then Japan, and uh, they're selling, again, perfect things. They cannot sell it to India, so... I, I don't know, again, probably it's not a question, answer you expect, but uh, I cannot uh, suggest anything which is not European, European. I'm also always thinking of okay, what we will recycle something and sell it 
under the EU regulations. I, I understand that there may be limitations probably currently, but uh, I believe if this is a method, feasible method, then it yes. can be introduced by time and it can be used. If it is not it available be. now, it doesn't mean that it can yes. never be. I was just wondering if... No, no, yes, uh, definitely. I mean, for breakwaters, we have we have solutions because we are we have you have territory, you have good stone. Of course, of course, uh, uh, certain recyclables which are well uh, pressed into certain parts could be used to reclaim land. But it's not as simple as that. I mean, not at the top of the reclamation, but at the bottom. The re reclamation looks like this iceberg which Titanic hit. So, you know, you're making it like a mountain. You're reclaiming land from the bottom up, and, and on the top you see just the, the, the tip. But for this, you can use this. Of course, if it's the right material, then probably it could be not only plastic. It could be some inert material, which would not disrupt. Again, then we're talking about sea life, ecology. It's complicated, I'd say. Thank you. attempt, but I think after hearing, uh, well, two things, the, some problems for this island, yes. uh, well, uh, from cycle economy point of view, well, uh, to be able to have the cycle as full, well, uh, reusing, separating, etc., but say in, for this country, well, uh, the cycle is not complete, unfortunately. For solving the, the measure of the problems, I think in Cyprus, northern Cyprus, there should be two factories. One cup factory, for instance, to convert old cars, metallic parts to cast iron. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I don't know the capacity is to be in which size because we are talking about the problem that it is a serious problem, but. Well, the population is not in the, may not be in the order uh, for feeding such a uh, factory. The other factory, for instance, in our university, Middle East Technical, Northern Cyprus campus, uh, well, we triggered the things, uh, increasing first the awareness of people, students, academicians, and triggered the Green Campus Initiative, and started to collect the waste and separate papers, uh, glasses and metallic parts, but couldn't find a company in Northern Cyprus uh, paper well, to recycle it and collecting uh, well, in an area and it is now, today it is full, full of waste paper and some metallic parts. Couldn't find company to complete this cycle. The other one, for instance, glazing material, yes, uh, well, jars, etc even not collecting because there is no such a factory. There is, there is no factory? Yeah, yes, in northern Cyprus. Uh, uh, jars, for instance, collecting glasses, yes. okay, but and so what? Yes. If we, uh, say, can find that in the system uh, another company to export to Turkey or a European country for completing the circle, but, well, uh, the, it is expensive and not so practical. I think it is there important. Are, there are companies, I have to, there are companies. I, I have a so list of their and, uh, addresses here in North Cyprus, North which are Cyprus. doing, yes, which are collecting pet, uh, is probably exporting them. Well, I'm going to inform in my And it will be in our study. But, uh, but you're completely right. And I will tell you, when a country does not have a recycling facility, it's better start, let's say, like a virgin market and, and impose, impose, or, or, or, or not, not impose, let's say a better word, reward, recycling. Uh, not even Canada has perfect recycling. They, they, they have uh, mixed waste and um, 
paper on big top. Austria has perfect slide. Uh, so I think uh, if uh, North Cyprus start recycling at home, so not to have one garbage, let's start from big town. So to, to start recycling from home. That, not to make, and, and do the things exactly what, what you said. Sell to Turkey, we're not in Europe. We should, this, is a good, this is a good also situation. Not in Europe, sell to Singapore, Turkey, everywhere, in the moment. Uh, but if we get used to it, and, and, and I mentioned, I mean, but very brief, it comes down to family, it comes down to custom. If we recycle at home, if we have, we have eight garbage, eight, let's start with three separations from home. That makes the factory which will eventually have to be built which does automatic recycling of metal, aluminium, paper, glass, what is left over by mistake, then uh, the percentage of recycling of this factory raises to this 80% mentioned today. Do you, know, do you know that in this project I'm going, you would be shocked that, because the, we are collecting, like here, we are collecting garbage bags with similar composition which I showed in uh, Turkey, Big Town Turkey. You know what is the recycle, what we recycle in a new factory, approved by you? We don't recycle more than 30% and 16% for compost. The rest goes properly to the landfill, pressed, packed, inert, but goes to the landfill. If we would do this, it would be 80%. So I think it's a way. When we don't have money or Europe, we don't make, a, and I would be happy to, you know, ask Europe to make a project plan for such a plant which would serve major cities here. We always have to talk about transport and these things. Thank you. Thank you very much.